Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, depending on where you are joining from. My name is IG Reddy. I'm your host today. First, thank you all for registering and taking the time to join us today for this webinar on digital transformation, mobile first approach. First, a few housekeeping announcements. At any time during the webinar, please feel free to ask questions by typing them into the questions or chat window on your screen. Questions will be answered at the end of the session. Following the webinar, recording will be available and shared with all attendees. If you experience any technical issue, please visit the help menu in the GoToWebinar control panel on the right of your screen. Lastly, I've placed all of you on mute to prevent any background noise. Now a brief about AppStack. We provide customized IT consulting services for companies ranging from mid-size to Fortune 1000 enterprises. Leveraging agile practices, our SMEs, architects, and associates build software applications, products, and platforms where the primary drivers of innovation and growth of our clients is in the software inside. We deliver quality and speed to market on all our application development projects. Founded in 2007, we are headquartered in Edison, Texas with offices in US, Middle East and Hyderabad. We have recently forwarded into Canada uh, in April 2022. Coming to the webinar topic, so why digital first approach, uh, mobile first approach in our digital transformation? Today, you should be able to perform whatever you perform on a, a laptop or a, a desktop on a mobile device. A mobile proliferation from B2C to B2B is here to prevail. Today's mobile users demand rich, seamless mobile experiences, which is why it's essential to have a long-term cost-effective mobility strategy. Cultivating meaningful, accessible, and immersive experiences keeps the customer engaged and drives the business value from the mobile applications. In this webinar, we cover the architecture, frameworks, and technologies for developing the mobile applications following mobile first approach. As an enterprise, standardizing these provides the governance framework for federated development of mobile applications. Now to introduce our presenter today, Prakash. Prakash comes with 25 years of experience in software engineering. Prakash adds value by defining project scope, technology solutions, implementation, and support. He has been a veteran coach mentoring and developers in designing, developing, and delivering desktop, web, and mobile applications. Through his leadership and technology expertise, he has delivered a number of digital solutions. I will now hand it over to Prakash. Prakash, the stage is yours. Thank you, Ajay, for the introduction. Good morning, good evening to all the participants from wherever you are joining. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar today on a digital transformation and mobile first approach. <clears throat> the agenda. Yeah, sorry. The agenda of this webinar is to provide insights into why mobile first approach has to be considered for the small and medium businesses as well as the enterprises in a business sense and what are all the architectures and the technical cho choices available to deliver them. Uh, we, all, we are also including the suggested frameworks and best practices to deliver a, a seamless mobile application. With this, uh, we move to the next one. So right now, what is the 
uh, approach why mobile first approach have to be considered uh, based on the current statistics and the data from various sources uh, if you see the graph um, from 2017 to 2025 the revenues that were generated by mobile apps are increasing from uh, 177 billion in 2017 to uh, 613 billion in uh, 2025 that is projected one and uh, mobile apps are projected to generate more than 613 billion us dollars in by 2025 the amount of money right now the consumer is spending on goods purchases in 2021 exceeded 3.8 trillion dollars and there is an increase year on increase of 18 percent from uh, 2020 and uh, it is expected to reach 4.9 trillion dollars by 2025 so the average uh, e-commerce shopper uh, right now spends more than thousand dollars per year on online purchases of consumer goods right now more people are making purchases via mobile devices than uh, via desktop and laptop systems right now nearly six in ten internet users uh, aged between 16 to 20, 64 or buy something or the other online every week. Mobile internet is 55% of the total internet usage right now, and approximately 88% of mobile time is spent on the mobile apps. So right now, uh, approximately 4.5 billion unique users are using mobile internet. So uh, if you look at the graphs and all, so mobile phone is uh, being used by 5.3 billion people, which is almost like 66% of global population. And the total internet users are 5 billion, uh, which is 63.1% uh, versus the population. And active social media users are 4.7 million, which is 59%. And annually there are uh, new users, 203 million new users are getting added to the uh, mobile internet, getting connected to the mobile internet. This signifies how important the mobile application is and why the mobile app has to be the first priority for the businesses. So, the basic question for any business is, do my business need a mobile application? As we have seen in the previous slides, uh, the usage and penetration of the mobile internet by the user, users is very high now let's see some points on why mobile app is required for the business for every business uh, customer is the key uh, with a mobile app the businesses can target acquiring new customers and build the loyalty of the existing customers so also uh, the shopping experience from the comfort of using mobile uh, with rich user interfaces simplifies the shopping experience Enhance the marketing programs uh, by sending uh, users specific offers and make customers buy products they are interested in. They can uh, customers can mark uh, interested products and uh, you can uh, businesses can send the information if there are any offers available on those interested items. It reduces the cost of operations by shipping products from the nearby locations, ensuring faster delivery of the goods, and also collect data on the users and user buying pattern, user interest, and analyze the data to better recommend uh, products to the customer. And this data, you can use it for analysis purpose. <clears throat> Some of the simple use cases for the application could be like um, uh, to develop mobile app that can be integrated with the ERP systems for critical operations to the managers or to the executives. Uh, back-end ERP systems can be connected through mobile app where uh, the app can give certain reports or certain um, uh, make uh, executives do certain operations from their mobile application. Enterprises um, right now uses multiple applications that their employees are uh, using for day-to-day -day activities from their uh, uh, systems, laptops or desktops. Uh, if we provide an application which interacts with those applications will be helpful to the employees of that organization instead of using the systems uh, they will they can simply use the mobile app to do the same and the organization can also send notifications based on the specific to the employees uh, based on the region or based on the uh, locations they are in 
uh, small businesses they can use uh, app they can develop app and use the app to increase their sales and take orders and deliver the goods for individual developers uh, they can also develop special applications that benefits the majority of the users and um, the developer can also get benefited by monetizing the app uh, through different uh, various uh, programs currently uh, 96.5 percent of apps in android are uh, free apps and uh, for ios um, apple it is 92.5 percent now let's see what is the percentage of mobile applications by categories the major categories is based on the downloads uh, that are available on the market uh, apple uh, apple store and google stores so shopping apps constitute 25 percent of total and followed by entertainment at 22 percent lifestyle apps at 17 percent gaming at 15 and utility 10 percent and uh, others at 11 percent uh, basically uh, google and uh, apple play store differ uh, on the categories uh, list of categories google has 32 categories and uh, apple has um, 24 categories that they uh, when the application is deployed uh, they give those categories list but these mobile apps uh, fit in one of those uh, above six seven categories that was mentioned now let's uh, take a look at mobile application types there are different ways in mobile application can be developed and we are uh, just going through briefly going through the different types of uh, mobile applications uh, development the first one is the native apps then hybrid apps and cross-platform apps these are the three category three types of applications development methodologies that can be used basically what is na native app uh, native apps are created for specific platform of either one of either for ios or for android so these apps run on one specific platform and uh, they use native features that are offered by the mobile operating system the pros, advantages and disadvantages of uh, using native apps is um, they tend to optimize the user experience there will be uh, they can provide rich user experience when developing native apps <laughs> provides better performance uh, they will also very quick to provide new features of mobile operating system and they can operate more quickly and intuitively uh, the disadvantages uh, in this approach is it requires more resources to develop and maintain the application. The code base is separate for Android application and native. The code base is separate for iOS application. All the updates are required to be downloaded and installed. Sometimes even the download uh, in the native code might be uh, bigger in size and compared to other options. So uh, to develop uh, native Android applications, um, Android uses um, Java or Kotlin and uh, with Android Studio uh, as the, their medium to build the application. For iOS applications, it is Objective-C and uh, Swift that can be used with uh, Xcode. Now moving on to the hybrid apps. Uh, these apps are responsive web applications or websites that are loaded in the mobile. A device in the browser so internally the application calls the website or application uh, pages and those pages are loaded in the browser of the application uh, the advantage uh, is that this app works on all the devices and it's easier to develop and quick to make and easy to maintain and updates are not required to uh, to be rolled out uh, basically any update on the website or web application it will be reflected immediately in the application HTML, CSS, JavaScript framework, frameworks, or any languages uh, like um, Python, PHP, they, they can uh, use the uh, use to develop uh, hybrid apps. The disadvantages uh, in this approach is it's dependent on the browser support. Not all features of the mobile will be available. Uh, they are limited by uh, the um, plugins that are being used and the internet is required in uh, at all the times they cannot work offline mode uh, coming to the cross-platform apps uh, cross-platform app uh, run across both the platforms 
and any all the devices seamlessly. These apps are installed uh, on devices like native apps. Uh, the code is built close to the native app build. They are not exactly uh, built as native, but uh, the final output will be close to the native app. The advantage of uh, this approach is uh, it's quick to develop and the code will be shared between different mobile OS. Uh, depending on the technology and the UI is required to build se separately for the platform. Uh, greater capacity for streamlining the development process as well. There is no need to build and maintain apps for separate platforms. A single application code will do will suffice for both the platforms. Businesses can save time and resources in, uh, in developing these uh, applications in is in the class class platform. The disadvantage of this approach is some mobile features may not be accessible until a plugins are supported uh, is provided by the technology component and they lack power of the native apps. Uh, basically, these apps are developed using React Native or Xamarin. Currently, Microsoft has um, uh, discontinuing uh, the Xamarin and moving to Mavi. Um, then uh, there is Flutter and Unity for gaming, gaming apps. Now let's take a look at mobile, uh, simple mobile application architecture. <clears throat> Uh, as in any other development, application development, uh, a clearly defined architecture for mobile app will have the benefits of ease of development, flexibility, maintainability, and extensibility of using different development methodologies. A strong application architecture will save resource utilization in short term and in long term as well. Uh, the basic mobile application uh, follows layered uh, architecture where separation of the layers allows performing the specific role in the application. As shown in the image, uh, the mobile application also follows layered architecture. The layers are shown in the diagram, presentation layer, business layer, and data layer. What they do is a presentation layer, it provides the user with the presentation of the application, where the user will be interacting with the application, and this is the main core of the application which will engage users with the application and um, business layer of the application provides business logic of the application for the application uh, in this layer the api services are consumed by the mobile application and uh, all operations will be handled in this layer the api services could be internal or could be external third party provided api to perform certain activities the data layer of the application deals with uh, storing the data in local database, data utilities, and other components to support the application like uh, cache and other services. Now moving into the native mobile architecture. Um, <clears throat> this is a quick, quick view of uh, different application architectures, how Android and how iOS are designed. So if you look at the uh, Android architecture, uh, Android has a Linux kernel. It is the core of the Android system and it is the layer between device hardware and upper layers of Android architecture. Libraries uh, consist of all the uh, libraries uh, the, that are available that can access the hardware uh, component and uh, contains Android runtime as well. Android runtime, uh, this is to optimize the battery life, memory and performance through DVM. The, basically, when an application is generated, build, it generates uh, into the byte code. The application framework, uh, it is built on top of the native library layers uh, provided uh, with the application programming interface and the higher level services. The features of the Android operating system are available uh, through API, APIs written um, in the form of Java classes and um, Android developers uh, use these high level services to build the applications the application framework uh, consists of the key services like activity manager resource manager content manager and many other uh, components and on top of it uh, there is the applications layer where uh, all the third party uh, applications or internal applications that are developed by android required for the android system will be available in the applications layer when you look at the ios uh, architecture it is simply 
it has got core OS layer. Uh, it is the core of the iOS system. All the low level features, uh, those other technologies are built on top of this, like uh, Bluetooth framework, external accessory framework, security services framework, and many other frameworks are built on core OS layer. Uh, core services, uh, they are built uh, for internal framework um, to access the functionalities of the device, uh, like address book, uh, cloud kit framework, core data frameworks, location, motion, health kit, um, social, and many other framework that provide access to the internal functionalities. Uh, media layer, all the graphics, audio and video functionality is available through this layer. Uh, UA kit, <coughs> Core graphic frameworks and other media related frameworks are part of this layer, and this includes uh, core animation images as well. Cocoa Touch layer uh, this provides a framework related to touch, game centers, map, push kit, UI kit, and other frameworks. Now, looking at the hybrid uh, architecture, it is simply basically the web pages or sites that is made responsive. And these pages, pages are called in the browser of the application. So the web pages can call, um, will be calling uh, native apps as shells for the backend, but uh, platform neutral through platform neutral JavaScript, HTML, and CSS for the front end. Uh, this um, uses OS specific APIs uh, that will call internally, call the OS specific APIs, and then get the results and show it into the web, web page. Uh, cross platform, uh, the cross platform application builds uh, to generate widgets or bridges that interact with the device OS. Based on the technical stack uh, used, the internal framework differs, but uh, they provide the necessary uh, functions to interact with the device. Now looking at the uh, complete development process. Um, the application development basically starts with the concept of the application and what problem it is required to solve. The key steps uh, to identify in this approach are like um, you need to uh, identify what is the purpose of, purpose of the application, who are the users of the application, what is the minimum viable product that you want to build, then what are the must have features, nice to have features and which one to be released in which release and probably uh, plan for multiple releases in this stage of the application. <clears throat> uh, one important thing to note here is um, check whatever the application you, uh, users are building, uh, I mean you are building, check if the application meets the statutory and legal compliance regulations imposed by the Google and Apple stores before starting any for, further in the target markets. Basically sometimes, uh, based on the legal compliance and uh, restrictions imposed by the countries, the Google stores or uh, Apple store may not allow applications to go live in those markets. So this has to be taken care of from the beginning, in the beginning itself. Once the strategy of the application is ready, uh, the next step is to plan for the application. So in this stage, uh, the decision to build the application specific to the platform, whether you want to build a, Android application or iOS or both the devices has to be concluded along with device types, whether it should be available for, uh, available for mobile only or mobile and tab, iPad, all those things have to be considered in the planning phase. Then uh, comes to the high level plan with the timelines for the MVP and the releases along with the user stories for each of those releases. For each release, you will have uh, formulated user stories and prioritized them. The early identification of platforms and devices, uh, this will help the development focus only on those areas and architecture frameworks suitable for the applications. The next stage is to build the UX and UI of the application. In uh, Basically for mobile application, UX and user experience and user, inter user interface plays major role in the adoption, mobile application adoption by the users. So this is the critical and first key success factor for the application. Basically users will see, will first to see the interface, 
prior to looking at the uh, at the application and using the application for any functional settings. So basically, UX and UA has to be the most uh, critical factor in critical success factor. The steps uh, involved in designing the UX UA is um, basically uh, one has to prepare the information architecture. What it does is basically uh, define how the information will be structured, how users will interact with the application that is defined. Then once you have the information architecture, then go with the uh, sketches or wireframes. So uh, these sketches or wireframes will show the content placement, where the content will be placed, where the menu, how the menu will be organized, what should be there in the uh, header, what should be there in the footer, all those these sketches or wireframes will be will have the placeholders. Then the next step is mockups. These mockups for each of the screen has to be developed with navigable links using uh, some tools like Adobe XD. It can be tested with selected key stakeholders of the application and uh, finalized whether they, uh, the navigation is complete, whether um, the, uh, all the pages are coming up as expected. So this mockups is another important point that will be key for the development. Once uh, these mockups are finalized, uh, the development can start. In this phase of development, uh, the development team will finalize the architecture, development language, in which language the application has to be developed, and the development methodology. Uh, basically for mobile application agile development approach will be the beneficial uh, it will help in uh, faster development uh, improved quality uh, lower cost of development and reduces risk at a later stage and also customer experience and feedback is incorporated at early stages of releases so that will help in fixing the bugs and also go live with uh, faster and go live uh, with mvp a minimum viable product Next comes to the testing part. Um, for the testing, iOS testing, uh, Apple developer account uh, generally provides test flight, which can be used to test the application before going live. Uh, uh, whoever is going to test the application in iOS, those ad, uh, users will be added to the developer account. And when the app is deployed, they will get notified uh, for testing for testing and uh, they can do the testing and also test flights provide crash information uh, or uh, they, they will also allow users to upload uh, anywhere they are struck uh, screenshots of the um, app where they are, uh, where the user has faced some problems <laughs> for android testing uh, google has a different streams they have open testing closed testing and internal testing so each releases uh, the, it will be made to the appropriate streams and apart from this um, once uh, a build is made and is uploaded uh, users can be given link to download the build file which is apk file they can download it directly by providing a link and they can join the join the test streams as well once the testing is completed and um, all the issues are all the bugs are fixed then it can go live for <coughs> Going live, both the, uh, app stores, they will not make uh, application live immediately after submitting. They go through um, the review process. Before that, uh, the developer will have to choose the countries the application will be made, should be available, and uh, application will be reviewed by the stores. So the review will be done for the application compliance. They will look at the compliances and as per the policies laid, laid out by the respective stores and may need sometimes they may ask for some explanations on the permissions required for the application uh, this process uh, might take uh, a few hours to few days and uh, uh, and also stores if they can remove the application from if it was found later in violation of any policies um, laid out by them or based on the government rules and regulations uh, they might take out the application as well once uh, review is approved, uh, the app will go live and developers can choose, alternatively developers can also choose when to make the app live. They can choose immediately or on a certain date, they can make the application available. Uh, 
So oh, what is the best framework um, uh, to develop the mobile application? Basically, it is based on the use cases and the architecture and the framework has to be selected. Uh, suppose if you have a content-based application, the hybrid approach will work well. And for using device-specific features or developing for one platform, the native approach will be best suited. In general, um, for in general applications, the platform of the cross-platform approach will be advantageous um, based on the um, following reasons. Um, like uh, it will have the advantage of enhanced UX UI. The platform development uh, offers consistent and flawless user experience across iOS and Android platforms. The lightweight uh, app UI helps uh, in loading content and the graphics quickly. The apps adopts um, faster to different device screens for faster data display and seamless uh, data streaming. Improved performance. Um, uh, the cross-platform apps uh, offer high speed and performance just uh, like uh, native apps. They are very close to native apps. Sometimes they might uh, even exceed the native apps performance as well. So um, offline support, um, one of the advantages is the offline accessibility feature that helps overcome the challenge of lack of off offline support. Hence, um, uninterrupted access to the app's data without performing performance glitches is available uh, through cross-platform apps. You can, uh, there can be local database can be maintained with the most frequently required data uh, to serve. So that way it will be faster uh, and easier to, uh, uh, to support the application. It's easy to maintain um, any updates uh, in native apps. In generally, any updates in the native apps need to have code in changing in both the application, uh, both the platforms. Instead of that, in cross-platform case, it will be a single code base that will be used, and it, because of that, uh, the development will be faster, and uh, it can be rollout will be simple, and maintenance will be easier. Uh, it also saves time. Uh, because they are um, easier and faster to develop, so it runs. Um, it runs on both iOS and um, Android, so it will also save the time in development uh, time. Lesser cost. The most significant advantage uh, of this approach is permits reduced development cost. Um, this approach enables development of apps for multiple platforms without maintaining numerous code base. And uh, unlike native apps, these applications use single code base for both the platforms. Uh, thus, it allows um, the development team to accelerate the development process, which reduces the time to market for the apps um, significantly. <laughs> now look at the best practices uh, to develop the application is like, uh, the basic thing is, what is the problem that your app is able to solve the solve the or solve for customers that is where the unique value proposition comes in picture then intuitive user experience so the uh, information has to be organized in such a way it requires minimum number of user actions basically more or less uh, it should be within limited to max of three or four clicks the user should be able to find the information or should be able to do what they are supposed to, they wanted to do within those three or four clicks. Even four is not required, within three clicks it should be done. Uh, Invisible EA, uh, you have to keep the interface light uh, by removing all the unnecessary elements uh, that do not support user tasks. <clears throat> and the control features uh, should be set by uh, selecting what is important and reducing nice to have features. Um, Right platform. So research about your target audience, whether they are on most of your audiences will be on using iOS or using Android device and research on that. And then what kind of devices they will be using, whether they are using high-end smartphones or low-end smartphones like that, that should be uh, decided before starting, uh, starting the application uh, design. Reduce clutter, uh, a simple rule is to have one action per screen. One screen will have only one action to perform, whether save it or cancel it, something like that. <laughs> User onboarding, uh, 
great ex this uh, onboarding experience reduces uh, the bondment and rates and boosts long term uh, metrics such as user retention extra the onboarding process should be simple easier and very very um, they should be able to do it in very quickly uh, use the app start using the app so the onboarding process has to be very um, quick and fast thorough testing uh, they, it should be application should be tested thoroughly uh, in during the development process and after the development process as to ensure a bug free application is deployed in uh, in play stores robust core um, the most important feature is um, um, Is, uh, the most important functionality has to be the core of the application. So other features you can go on adding later about, but the, what is the exactly the unique value that um, is to be done in the beginning itself. Feedback, uh, beta test, uh, employ beta testers and they will uh, provide regular feedback about bugs and uh, try to seek help from other developers to get uh, a different views on the uh, application performance and the application. Uh, One-handed operation. Um, <clears throat> so generally, mobile users will be using uh, application with a single hand. So all the frequently used controls, common action items, they should be in, uh, sh they should be able to access through the thumb itself. So any destructive actions, they should not be uh, able to uh, go directly through thumb, but through other mechanisms, they should be able to do it. And most importantly, the security of, of the app is very critical. It should be considered from the beginning of uh, development itself. <clears throat> what are the key steps to building successful mobile app? So basically, uh, mobile app focus on, focuses on three major aspects. One is the market, user, and product. These um, gives user unique value, good performance, and great usability. So when we look at this, uh, the, we have consumer-centric features and business-oriented features. In the consumer-centric features, the design makes um, or breaks a mobile app, and the UI UX should be well thought thought out uh, UI and UX, and uh, workflow should be stable, no bugs or no um, app crashes. Data, privacy, and security has to be given highest priority. And help desk accessibility, if the user requires some help, so they should be able to reach out to help desk to get a, any information on how to perform certain things. The business-oriented feature, uh, it should be focused on user retention, then uh, protection from data breaches, uh, so that uh, no application is uh, not used to get into backend databases and do some malicious actions. So our future development and maintenance should be um, one of the business feature and then quick and easy updates process. And if the payments are involved, uh, if subscription based or whatever the uh, application monetization concept, it should be simple to use. Creating a prototype uh, on paper or wireframes um, through software that will help uh, the developers to understand what is expected, how the app is supposed to be uh, performing, and um, that will help uh, on the mockups and wireframes will be helpful. What are the key steps for building successful mobile app? Uh, and the first one is the target audience. No, who is going to use the app? Like maybe some apps are um, focused on kids between certain ages and some apps are uh, focused on certain uh, groups of people. So that has to be very clearly defined. What is the target audience? What is the value? The next one is the value. How does the app benefit the user? Uh, it needs to be consumer needs. It should consider consumer needs, uh, business goals, and also the technology. A business model is how do you monetize your app? So what monetary benefits and how to make it, whether to make the app monetize or not, that should be one of the business model. Your business model has to address that. 
features uh, what features are required for the app and what features will improve or boost the app's functionality a technology what is the preferred technology for the app whether you want to go with the native app development even um, or hybrid apps or cross platform and what is the technology that you need to select uh, even within that uh, range there are different technology stacks available so that is need to be preferred technology into ux and ui the app is is the app is simple to understand that is the question that you need to uh, check and then what are the user benefits uh, of the in-app purchases if we added suppose if we want to monetize the app so what benefits that user is going to get uh, if they purchase through in-app and the team development team if you have any in-house team or outsourced development teams uh, do they have uh, necessary skills and they can develop uh, deliver the application and all those things you need to consider um, in building this successful mobile app then third part integrations there are many components uh, will be required to integrate uh, because not everything can be uh, done within the same uh, within the uh, is available in the native or in the hybrid or cross platform architecture so we need to find out third party services or third party components as well then bug fixes um, and regular updates will help uh, constant improvement through adding new features and uh, timely bug uh, fixes as well so users will not be interested if they find uh, application crashing multiple times many times or uh, facing many issues so they will not be interested in using it they might user retention might be an issue um, then user retention is uh, how what are all the analytical tools to understand customer gen even uh, play stores provide information on user retention so based on that um, and there are third party tools that will also understand where the crashes are happening or <clears throat> how many users have downloaded the application like that so one of those uh, is need to be used in the mobile app <clears throat> so app monetization uh, it is basically uh, how do you generate uh, revenue based uh, from the app if you want to monetize the app there are multiple ways uh, generally the applications can be classified into these four apps like four uh, monetization approaches one is free some of the many of the enterprises offer some uh, certain applications to their uh, users like banks or anything they will offer the app free to use but there is a login provided to the user to log in uh, to the application. So those are all the free apps. So other apps uh, like uh, in-app advertisement, some applications can be developed, um, given free to the users with the support of advertisements. Or um, if the user wanted to, uh, without any advertisement, it, they can be charged separately so that that app will be a different um, approach premium uh, it is free for a few days and then user need to subscribe to the app by paying uh, doing an in-app purchases or making the payment through play stores uh, paid apps um, user uh, downloads and uh, pays uh, to use the app so they they will be paying one time uh, making the one time payment uh, to to use the app <coughs> Other thing is uh, application usage, usage statistics uh, to understand whether what the application, how the application is uh, being used, or how, what is the user behavior. Some statistics are required um, to analyze by the businesses. So app stores uh, and there are additional tools that are available. They can uh, be used to track the user behavior and uh, crash information, device information, and uh, analytics as well. Uh, notifications uh, comes to the, this is one of the important uh, area where uh, notifications can be sent uh, to the mobile user so there are two ways one is a push notification and these are all uh, push it to the mobile once a notification is sent from the back-end systems so users will get notified of the notification and then they can open the app there are another in-app notifications is they have to be the app has to be open to see those notifications 
So push notifications, best example will be messaging applications. Uh, they use a lot of push notifications. Um, application security. This is a, one of the most critical um, thing right and right now nowadays. It is like it is app security is not a feature. It is it must be considered from the beginning of the application development. So uh, there are few things that can be taken care uh, during the development process. Uh, one is the encrypt all the data. Any data that is exchanged between uh, app and the backend should be uh, must be encrypted. The advantage is even if the data is stolen, there is nothing uh, that can be read by uh, and understand or misused by the criminals. Uh, basically, we can understand the power of encryption when government organizations are asking for permission to access iPhones or uh, decode WhatsApp messages. So, it is very important to have to encrypt all the data. Use of libraries, uh, the second one is, um, uh, since many times it is required, third party libraries need to be used. So when uh, using a third party library, test the code thoroughly before using it in the app. Some lab libraries can be extremely insecure and open for vulnerabilities. So keep watching those libraries for um, any patches, patch releases, and if anything is reported, and fix it, then apply those patches immediately. Authorizing the API calls. Each API must be authorized centrally, centrally for maximum security with encryption and keys. <clears throat> uh, stronger authentication. Uh, some of the biggest uh, security breaches happen uh, due to weak authentication. So it is becoming increasingly difficult uh, and, um, and uh, to keep uh, the authentication um, so that it's, it does not break. It is dependent on the user. So, so a strong password setup mechanism should be implemented in the application. Uh, session handling. Uh, sessions in mobile are uh, much longer than the web sessions. The servers, uh, the API servers, if you are using any backend uh, servers, they have to maintain the session for a longer time and uh, that will burden the servers. Um, instead of session, probably use tokens uh, to identify the devices and to identify the session. Uh, test repeatedly. Every day there are new threats are emerging and new solutions are required. So in uh, before uh, deploying the application to live, I try to do a penetration testing, threat modeling and immunitors to continuously test apps for vulnerabilities fix them with uh, each update and issue patches whenever there is a required, um, whenever patches are required. Use the latest cryptography techniques. Um, it is uh, very vital to remain updated with the latest security algorithms and wherever, whenever possible, use modern encryption methods like AES with 512-bit encryption or 256-bit encryption. encryption. Uh, in addition to this, um, you should perform manual penetration testing and threat modeling on the, on the application before uh, the application goes live to ensure uh, all the vulnerabilities are <coughs> closed. Uh, secure the backend. Uh, it is means um, it is essentially to have security measure, measures in place to safeguard against the malicious attacks at backend servers. Some of the, I mean, uh, most of the developers may assume uh, that only the app that has been programmed to access API can access, but that's not the case. So for that, uh, just test should verify all your APIs are in, a, in accordance with the mobile platform. And uh, because uh, <coughs> API authentication and uh, transfer mechanisms, they deviate from one platform to other. So it should be tested thoroughly before the application goes live. So, on a summary, uh, what was uh, dealt so far? Uh, just a brief of uh, recap. So, why businesses need mobile app? Right now, as more and more users are getting connected and has access to the smartphones with mobile internet, it will improve your customer retention and attracting new customers. Categories of mobile applications. 
like we have outlined the uh, percentage of applications that are downloaded and used by the users. Different types of uh, mobile applications we have covered a native, hybrid, and uh, cross platform application and advantages and disadvantages of those. Uh, mobile architectures, the basic mobile architecture, and um, described internal architecture of each of uh, those mobile development types. Uh, application development process. Uh, the overall development process of the mobile application right from the strategy idea to deploying to live and uh, agile is the best uh, application i mean application development methodology that can be that suits mobile development uh, best framework uh, the framework is suggested is based on the use cases but for general application development uh, we propose to use um, cross platform as it has got more advantages Best practices, uh, best practices uh, to follow right from the UI UX design and uh, um, all the development practices are uh, outlined. But most important is the security of the application that has to be taken care of from the beginning itself. So key steps to do, uh, build a mobile app uh, like market, user and product consideration are key focus areas, uh, app monetization, a few options how to monetize your app uh, we have covered and security of the app so covered briefly on the security of the application but security has to be the highest priority in developing the app with this um, we'll come to the end of the topics and uh, <clears throat> thank you for joining this webinar um, Please type in any uh, your questions in the chat window and uh, I will be answering the questions in case if we are not able to answer the question now, uh, I will send the response in email and uh, we'll respond to you on that. Yeah. One question. Uh, can you please provide some recommendations for preferred tools, frameworks, or platform uh, cross-platform development of mobile apps? <clears throat> for uh, cross-platform applications, um, preferred tools probably. Um, I mean, React Native is one of the preferred tool. Then uh, comes with the uh, Microsoft um, Xamarin or Movi that can be used for uh, as a one of the cross uh, tools to develop the cross platform application. Uh, are there any tools to uh, test mobile security? Yes, uh, there are tools to um, test mobile security, penetration testing and all. Uh, they will take care um, on those uh, aspects. So, what is the, can you tell how much of code will be used in cross-platform applications? Uh, this is one question. Uh, as you have seen in layered architecture of the application, uh, the business layer and <clears throat> data layer are shared 100% between um, iOS and Android. Uh, based on the selection of technology, the code shared, uh, I can say from around 70% to 95% of the code can be shared between uh, those um, platforms. <clears throat> yeah uh, how to increase mobile app performance once uh, the app is deployed and this is a good question actually um, once the app is deployed and adopted by the users uh, it is important uh, to retain the users um, to retain the app performance will play a very critical role uh, and this uh, i think this has to be factored from the beginning of the application development <clears throat> So a performance test, uh, you can do it uh, before releasing the app to live. And the performance is also depends on the device, um, device compatibility, operating system versions, memory consumption, network, and API server's response time as well. 
So all these have to be uh, considered to improve the performance. Um, like uh, you might need to compress the images, uh, loading the images from the content delivery networks or faster networks, proper caching mechanism, uh, storing important data and images in the local uh, on the device itself. So when you test the application, probably test it in your low bandwidth scenarios as well. So, okay, how to measure the success of mobile application? A good question. Um, uh, the success of a mobile application is based on the users um, and how many users uh, the application is being used by right now and the customer experience customer satisfaction reliability and availability so uh, the users can be uh, asked to give the feedback rating and a review of the application uh, in the stores so that that will be helpful uh, metrics yeah thank you thank you all um, i think there are no further questions uh, if you have any more you can um... thank you all uh, that's all the time we have today uh, if there are any questions that we didn't get to i uh, will share the answers along with the recording of this webinar you may also email us at any time at info at abstractcorp.com. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us for today's webinar and wish you all a great day ahead. Thank you.